A very good evening to you. Thanks for joining us on the Friday edition of the show. It's the last one for the week. Promise to make you watch a while. I'm Yemi Adebayo. Well, of course, the Super Eagles have played that uh, eagerly anticipated friendly against Saudi Arabia. He ended 2-2. And we're here to do a review of what went down right there uh, in Portugal. We'll also talk about football on the domestic scene. We'll talk about the Nigeria uh, domestic league here in Nigeria. We will also uh, take a look at what the International Olympic Committee has been saying about the 2028 Olympics and, of course, their stance on Russia. All right, it's the two-man show. My colleague, Austin Okonakman, is suited and ready. And, of course, we're taking this trip together. What a greetings to you, I mean, and of course, everyone joining us on the show tonight. Still an action packed to all the sports. It ended 2 2 right there in Portugal. That international friendly between the Super Eagles of Nigeria and Saudi Arabia. And I thought there were positives we can take from that one. Jose Pizero trying to give us a sort of team that can be convincing enough to win. Um, the AFCON, they've launched that mantra let's do it again. With this game that we saw today, I mean, can they do it again? It's a big question. Uh, I don't want to go ahead of myself. And on a day like this, I can be excused if I speak as a passionate Nigerian football fan. But before I do that, let's introduce our partner in the Lagos uh, studio. Uh, of course, uh, Dr. Agumbi Ade joins us now. Uh, greetings, Dotu. Um, thanks for joining us. Yeah, good evening. Thanks for having me as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I, I don't want to jump the gun, so I'm, I'm trying to rein myself in. Uh, before uh, I see it. But, but, but let me yield to Austin first. Uh, and of course, at some point, uh, we will have, because we're going to have a robust conversation around uh, this game, uh, we're going to also have uh, someone else join us, uh, someone who's been on the show uh, before, uh, join us so that we can, you know, look at it from different angles. I, I don't want to set the ball rolling. I, I'll let Austin do that. Austin, your thoughts on the game? As, as I said, I mean, I, I thought it was. Um... It was below my expectation, sincerely. Maybe because I expected the Super Eagles to win. Uh, I thought I needed to see more coordination. I also expected to see some level of, you know, fight, hunger. There are things we've said that seem to be missing in this team. These, those things are still missing. Look, even if you play a 5-4, you know, victory against a team that I expected to win, we will bring out those those parts that you didn't do right. And, I, and for me, those things that I've said about the Super Eagles, they are still there. I think defensive-wise, we still you know have those holes. Creative midfield, still a big problem. At some point, though, to be sincere, they started playing the sort of game that I wanted to see in terms of free-flowing football. But... You know that coordination that you can beat your chest and say, this is the style this team plays, and they can go on to, you know, keep playing this way and keep, you know, getting the results that they want. I haven't seen it. And for a team that has, you know, so much going for them, so much quality, so much ambition, at this stage, you want to start seeing it. I'm glad it wasn't a loss. If it was a loss or a defeat today, then there will be a serious problem because... I know football fans on the media will jump on it, but with this 2-2 two -two play, we can actually go and say, okay, this was missing, that was missing, how can we correct it? Uh, maybe against Mozambique, we'll see a better play. Uh, but as they say they want to do it again, I'm saying let's do more, you know? I'm, I don't want people to come at me and say, well, I'm too critical of the team. I'm just saying the same problems that we've mentioned, that we've seen back in the day, those problems are still there. And Jose Pizero must find a way to, you know, uh, settle them. Uh, before we we pass it on to Dotu in Lagos, let me quickly bring in our football data analyst, Shola Edegbele, is right here with me in London. Shola, good evening. Welcome to Sports Tonight. Hey, good evening, gentlemen, and thank you for having me on the show this evening. Awesome. Welcome, Shola. So let's get it, you know, rolling from here. I don't know if you listened to what I said, and you could tell that I was being a bit careful not to be too critical of the team, but did I say some of the things that you'd also like to say? Yes. Um, so it wasn't the result um, that we were expecting. Um, I thought we were going to win the game. 
I thought when we were winning the game 2-1, I thought we would be able to see it through. It was very unfortunate that the game ended in the draw. However, um, I've seen a lot of positives that I think the coach can continue to build on. Um, as, well as, the politi- as, well as, as well as the positives, we've also seen some negatives. And so these will be some learning lessons that we can take in preparation for the AFCON. And I'm, I'm interested in the lessons learned, you know, because you can go back, use the lessons learned to get, you know, better. What were some of the lessons learned tonight? So when I look at the result and the performance of the team, I can see that Pesero has started to implement a style of play. So that's good. But in terms of the lessons learned, there's still huge question marks on the goalkeeper position. Mm. You mentioned the, 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 the catchphrase for, this, for the team this year in the AFCOM will be, let's do it again. We will not be doing anything until we can secure the goalkeeper position. So that's number one. That's what we've learned. Number two, in terms of the, the defence, the full-backs, the right-back in particular, um, he was able to showcase his talents today, the first time in a long time, I think in about three years. Um, but I believe there's still competition. So that, that, that position hasn't really been secured yet. And in terms of the strike force, it was good to see um, Boniface and Ossiman um, starting together. I know a lot of people were excited by that. Um, but we still, I still think they still need some fine-tuning up front because in no honesty, Austin, we could have won this game in the first half mm-hmm. if we took our mm-hmm. chances. Um, yeah. We could have easily been up 3-0 at halftime, but we wasted a lot of opportunities and the final decisions and the final passes just didn't click. So I think yeah. those are the key lessons. Yeah, and I think that's the key word also I, I needed to use to use and I used it. I said they were lacking coordination. You know, that sort of coordination that you want to get from a team that understands the mission and then they go out there to execute it. Let me go to Dotun in Lagos. Dotun, did you also see that lack of coordination in the Super Eagles play today? Yeah, of course. Uh, I just want to say something here. You said the other time that you don't want to criticize the team, but you are saying the obvious. Uh, that, that's the obvious. Like you just asked just now about the coordination in the team. The team is not really coordinated, lacking a, a swift movement at the middle of the park. And even on the flank, we are not getting that, that, that a, a spark from the wingers. Not until second half when uh, Moses was brought on and we saw little spark coming from him and he actually created chances that we led to the first goal. But if you look at the, the, the team play in general, it is not what we desire. You said something the other time about uh, uh, let's do it again, that which has been the campaign here in Nigeria, that with what we saw today, I don't think let's do it again is really the campaign. It is let's get the team doing right should be the campaign as we speak right now. Just to add my voice to it, um, I, no, I think I can tone it down. It appears like um, Shola, Shola read my mind uh, and said everything I've wanted to say. And look, if, if it's this obvious, we're not, we're not coaches, and if it's this obvious to know that a tournament winning team must have a good goalkeeper, I mean, you, you, can't, you can't negotiate around that. You're going to have right. a solid defense. We don't. There's, there's no explanation. Look, I like the idea. Uh, I like the system the coach is trying to work with. I like the idea. We're, we're top heavy. So you, you have to use all the options you have in attack. I get all that. Central midfield, that combination, with, we're still not getting it right. And that defense, any defense that Saudi Arabia can walk through and score two goals, <laughs> against a stronger opposition, you guys are saying we could have won. Against a stronger opposition, what could have happened? We, we probably get Pumel, get hammered. And so I want to ask Shola something, and, and I'm going to ask Dotun. Uh, but, but let me just throw this uh, at Shola. Maybe he's going to be able to uh, answer me. The goalkeeping position and the defense, with just about three months to the Nations Cup, is, is there anything we can do? Obviously, the two goalkeepers we have there, a lot of people might not like what I'm going to say. If you're going to win the Nations Cup, I don't think you can win it with those two goalkeepers without mentioning names, but you know the two goalkeepers I'm referring to, and the defense. Do we have the personnel to replace or, I mean, is it a selection issue or 
we have players who can call in who we've not called before in the next three months and can change all of this. Okay, thank you for the question. Um, I'll start with defence. Um, we did not start with our starting left back and right back today. Um, so my expectation moving forward is the starting left back and right back will join the team and that should solve that equation. When we look at how the team played today, the two centre backs, instead of just launching the ball up front, they were passing out from the back. So we can see that Pesiro really instructed that and that was good to see. That's why in the first half, it looked like we were going to win this game 3 or 4-0. Um, in terms of the goalkeeper, that is a million-dollar question. We, as you said, I just don't see how we can win this cup with the two goalkeepers. Um, we do need to look, maybe internally, domestically, but we need to set up a scouting operation to call some new um, goalkeepers that can come in and trial them before this tournament starts in January. Actually, that is of utmost importance at this point now because uh, what happened today, we can't continue like this. <laughs> Definitely. Dr. React to that, before we go to Austin, uh, re react to that. Austin talked about it yesterday. <laughs> if, I mean, coming off the nightmare of seeing us probably just one goalkeeping error, Heart of the Nations Cup, another, a few other errors, we didn't qualify for the World Cup, not because we really played badly. Mm -hmm. It must be said. Of course. It's not because we played badly, but those little margins can cost you. It cost us, Nations Cup, cost us, World Cup qualifier. And it, you're saying let's do it again, but it looks like you're doing the same thing again. Yeah, yeah. You know, as I said the other time that the campaign should not be let's do it again. The campaign should be what can we do to make the team become better? So if you look at the team at large, starting from the goalkeeping area, like you said the other time, uh, it's not what we desire to see, we are seeing. And uh, uh, the defense side, uh, actually, we can work on it. Why I said th that is the fact that if it, let's take a clue from what happened in Barcelona football club last season, they were solid at the back, and compared to what is happening this season, so the, it, the, 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 the coach or the manager of the team can actually work seriously on the defenders, but unlike the goalkeepers, you can't do so much on the goalkeepers. The, goal, the goal, goalkeeper must be top-notch goalkeeper with high quality, not just a goalkeeper that keeps in... It's not about the league sometimes, but it's about the performance. What you bring to the table mm -hmm. week in, week out, and even with the national team. You said the other time that the two goalkeepers we have on board, what happened at the Nations Cup last time, we all remember, and what happened during the World Cup qualifier, we all remember. It cost us those two tournaments, and going forward again, we'll be going into another tournament by January, those two and do we do uh, the, these same two goalkeepers, and you can actually say it over and over that with these two goalkeepers, we can't go nowhere, because the same mistake we saw today has always been the mistake we've been seeing over and over. So if we can want to get it right, we need to look for the right goalkeeper in and around the world of soccer, maybe in the Nigerian Professional Football League or in the other league. We have decent goalkeepers okay. in Nigerian Professional All right. Football League. All right. Uh, I don't know if Austin agrees. Um, I mean, yeah. look, you can't be forgiven if you hear people speak passionately like this because it is yeah. the super egos. We've invested our emotions. Some of us yeah. were on a high. We, everything crashed. We're still trying to recover. Then you're seeing this. It's cause for worry. It, indeed it does, you know, yeah, me And I totally agree with everything you guys talked about. That There's no way you go and win a big tournament when your goalkeeping department is, is questionable. And let me tell you one thing. It is most times a good goalkeeper makes up a good defense line, mm -hmm. you know. So when you have a terrible goalkeeper, your defense line will be watery. And I think that's what we're seeing. First goal was a cheeky goal. Second goal, in fact, when I was learning basic football, that I was thinking of going into coaching, you don't concede a goal in the 90th minute. Because at that point, it means you are telling everyone that you're not ready to win that match. You know, and that's where character comes into play. You know, you want to see that you have a team that is solid and it tells you the way they're going to defend that goal. You, you said it right. If you had, had, had ended 2-2 two -two against Saudi Arabia, if it was a bigger team, it was probably going to end 4-2, 5-2. And you don't need those sort of results when you're going into, into a big competition. Yes, yeah, so we must find a way to cure this goalkeeping sickness. Yeah, it's an illness already. Because Nigeria, back in the day, let's start from the 1980s to the 90s, 
to the early 2000s, they went and Yama left. We've always been blessed with good goalkeepers. Mm -hmm. But now since Vincent and Yama left, uh, we, we were trying to get some stability. And when Kali Keme joined, but whatever happened, happened with Kali Keme. And since Kali Keme got out, we haven't gotten right with goalkeepers. And I don't want us to, to stay so much with goalkeepers because football is a team sport. So let's talk about some of the players uh, that are getting back into the team, um, Shola. I uh, was so tired on a boy again. Uh, I thought it was decent. Was it decent to you? Um, I think, in my opinion, that was a bad audition. Um, we saw when Peshiro brought on um, Bright, um, Osei Samuel, the game changed. Um, mm. The right hand side, we became more offensive. Um, I really think a boy struggled in this match. And I think the last three coaches that we've had haven't really given him a lot of opportunities to showcase himself. This yeah. is a good opportunity for him to showcase his talents. His first performance in three years, I don't think he did any himself. I don't think he did himself any justice with this performance. I think when he came off, he started to become more offensive. Let's say you get an opportunity to coach this team, and you just want to disrupt some of the things that Coach Pizarro has been doing. Would you play? Franco Yeka some more? And in this game, I don't think um, Franco Yeka's qualities were needed because he's more of a defensive midfielder. And um, what this game needed was more of creative, attackive um, outlet. Um, in the game against Sao Tome, we all discussed and we all did a review and we all spoke about how Pesira was able to include Ian Nacho. Today, I was very disappointed to see Ian Nacho on the bench. When Ian Nacho came on with Bright Osei Samuel and Moses Simon, he was able to get a goal, and we looked very dangerous on, on, on the counter-attack. Um, so for me, I think what Pissarro can do for the next match is, especially for Mozambique game, we need Ian Nacho starting. Um, as well as Edouei, Chukweze, I think, also struggled. Um, and so this game has shown us that yeah, Nacho is the man for the, for the right wing, and Bright Osei is the man for the right fullback position. But the goalkeeper position is looking like it will be a very big problem for us moving forward. Yeah, we need to find a way out of out of that. Or should I even say quagmire? Because it's 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 difficult to explain what's going on in terms of goalkeeping situation in Nigeria and, for a country so blessed. Yeah. And may I add, um, when we look at the stats, Nigeria had 15 shots, and Arabia only had four. Um, so when, and on the balance of play, we were the more dominant side. We just couldn't finish. Also, yeah. talking about defense, for the 90 minutes, Saudi Arabia couldn't carve open our defense. So it wasn't necessarily a defensive issue. Um, often, as you mentioned, they scored from two, three kicks. They were set pieces that really led to our destruction. And on another day, those set pieces may not have gone in. So it's really fine margins. I do think we are on the right track. But if we can just yeah. make some subtle changes with some of the personnel, I do think we, we're still favorites for this tournament in, in Ivory Coast. We'll see. We'll see. I don't know where you're getting that confidence from. I'm staying cautious. Um, but fingers crossed. We'll see. Uh, let, let's take a look at what the Super Eagles will be doing on Monday. Another friendly game will go down against Mozambique. And truly, guys, I don't know whatever result they want to get out of that one. We will still remember what happened tonight against Saudi Arabia. That's just what it is because you, you, you expect them to be, to be good and then get better in their next match. So on Monday, they will take on Mozambique and then we will come back and just sum everything together and see if they're making some improvement as a team, as we count down to the 2023 Africa Cup of Nations, post tonight on channels television. Let's go on a quick break. When we come back, we'll give you details of that friendly game against Mozambique on Monday. And the Minister of Sports in Nigeria, uh, John Eno, has been talking about the Super Eagles and the Afcon draw. We'll hear him when we come back. Don't go anywhere. Stay. You know, the fact that the senior national team, you know, the Super Eagles, you know, have qualified for the AFCON next year that is taking place in Cote d'Ivoire. And because of the challenge that I gave to the sporting federations when I met with them, 
they have come up with a campaign. That campaign is Let's Do It Again campaign, you know, that is supposed to, you know, create public awareness, that is supposed to, you know, get, you know, Nigerians, you know, sensitize Nigerians and get them to buy in into the need to support the Super Eagles, you know, as they make another attempt to win the African Cup of Nations. So they, my visit was to request from Mr. President to allow a window for me and the executive committee of NFF to come to see him so he can formally unveil this campaign so it will be sold to Nigerians. The hope is that you know, through these campaigns, we're going to be able to have you know, endorsements and you know, the selling of a lot of sports-related you know, you know, materials all get towards the African Cup of Nations and be able to, for the first time, go for this tournament without having to ask government for funding. In terms of the group that Nigeria has, you know, been, um, Nigeria belongs in the Afcon uh, tournament in Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, you, you know, for, for, for a team and for a country that has the desire and the determination to win the African Cup of Nations again after several years. I mean, what it means is that Nigeria was prepared for any group whatsoever. Call it the group of dead, call it whatever you want to call it. But I think that, and that is why one of the, you know, the initiatives that I brought to be Mr. President had to do with Let's Do It Again campaign. You know, the idea is that, you know, even the campaign alone is going to be like a moral booster to our football team, you know, to, to urge them on. You know, by the time they leave for the Cup of Nations and they are able to appreciate the fact that the whole country is behind them, the whole country is backing them, it provides that added, that added you know, fire power in them. So my response to that is that I don't expect that the country will not emerge you know, from that group because the country's plan and determination is to win the Afghan Cup and bring it to Nigeria. The, the, the issue of you know, the facilities and you know, it's, um, in the course of my briefing, I talked about you know, some you know, so, you know, some requests in, in, in certain specific areas, uh, you know, and those specific areas, you know, have to do with first funding for grassroots, you know, in, you know, infrastructure and facilities, you know, development. Now, one of the things we're bringing back is, you know, the, the headmaster and the, you know, the, the principals you know, cup competitions. And this is not going to be limited to football alone. It's going to be limited to a number of sports. And what's going to determine that is going to be the kind of followership that, you know, that sport, you know, excites amongst Nigerians, amongst our young men and women. I like it. I like everything the Minister of Sports Development in Nigeria, uh, John, and all one talked about. Um, this campaign, let's do it again. Yemi, um, the two you guys are right there in Nigeria. Are the fans feeling it? Do they believe that the Super Eagles can do it again? <laughs> uh, well, all right, let, let me throw my hands up and be the first to answer. Look, Nigerians <laughs> are patriotic. Nigerians are passionate people. Even when we're losing, somehow, somehow, um, you know, the fans believe we're going to win. So trust me, the fans are behind this. But tonight's game and some of the things they've seen in the past will, will give them, you know, some, you know, a cause for worry. But trust me, when it comes to supporting the team, when it comes to getting behind mm -hmm. the team, uh, the fans are all for uh, the Super Eagles. Be before we... Okay, let, let's just quickly, before I allow uh, Dr. to respond, uh, it wasn't only Nigeria that was in action today. Other African teams were in action as well. So let's quickly show you that and also give you the match details for the game on Monday. So uh, let me just quickly uh, pop, go to the screen, and of course, it's up there, Saudi Arabia 
and Nigeria. We've talked extensively about this one in a 2-2 to, to, uh, South Africa and Eswatini was goalless Guinea and Guinea-Bissau. The Guineans were able to win that game by a lone goal. And Equatorial Guinea uh, took on uh, Burkina Faso. That didn't produce a goal as well. New Zealand and DR Congo uh, was 1-1. Honors shared. Uh, they shared the spoils there. South Korea hammered the Cardiff Eagles 4-0. Uh, and of course, Angola and our next opponent, Mozambique, uh, settled for a one-all draw. Let's show you the match details for the next game involving the Super Eagles of Nigeria. And of course, we are hoping we're going to see a better outing from the team. And there you have it on Monday, Nigeria will take on uh, Mozambique. Uh, and of course, if you remember uh, this team, uh, of course, uh, uh, you know, it reminds you, it's close to Angola, of course, close to, uh, I mean, when I remember Angola, I remember what happened in 2006, uh, we didn't qualify. Yeah. And anytime I remember Mozambique, because they, they are from the same region, I don't know why I'm always remembering uh, and that, and of course, we've played with them a couple of times uh, before, and it was a bit problematic. Uh, let me go to Dotson quickly. Um, your, your thoughts, Austin asked us about how connected the fans with the new mantra, let's do it again. Uh, I know you're speaking as somebody, uh, you know, a sports journalist, somebody who loves the game, but throw that, put that aside, as a fan, as a fan of the Super Eagles of Nigeria, how connected do you feel the fans are uh, with this new campaign? Uh, well, well, truth need be told, uh, the Nigerians are, really, Nigerians are really in support of this team. Uh, the game I was watching together with some friends, and I can see how passionate they are. They were, so very, they were so happy, shouting, go, 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 kick it, kick it. You know, all of this action that comes from the fans. And I told one among them, I said, I love your passion about the Nigerian national team. And he said to me, he said, Which, uh, are you going to present another team for me to support? He said, it is always super good. He said, definitely, you can see the connection between the team and the fans. They are always there to share them to success. They are always there to support them with everything they have. So I can see the fans are actually up there for them at every, every time, whenever the team takes to the field of play. All right, so uh, that, that's very, very uh, interesting. I also have something that came to my mind. Uh, let me throw this at Shawlight, and of course, Austin takes it from there. Uh, look, I know this team doesn't need a overhaul. You, you, you still feel, from what you've said, I listened to you, you feel that this team is on track. But what are the things we could? Three months is, is not too, uh, it's, th that, that time span is not really very long. But if, if we will end up winning the Nations Cup, what are the things that must be done, a must, for us to win the Nations Cup? Um, number one um, um, will we'll be the goalkeeper. Um, so we need to find a solution for that problem. Um, number two, our seamen must be fit. Um, he's our superstar. And I think just having him on the pitch will put a lot of fear in the hearts of opposing defenders. Um, and as I said earlier, I don't think we need to make any major changes. I do think we're on track. And um, going back to the point about um, let's do it again, um, I think that's a masterstroke from Pesero. And um, when we look at previous managers um, before tournaments, they would say things like the players are young, the players are inexperienced. We are going there to learn. Um, that doesn't sit well with Nigerian culture. You know, Nigerians, we always want to be the best. We always want to go and conquer. Um, so I feel like what Pishiro is doing in emboldening this spirit of um, togetherness and victory and is good for the psyche of, and the mindset of the players. So I don't think there's any major overhauls. I think we're on track. And I think um, if... If a few individuals had started the game today, um, we would have won this game by a huge margin. I'm very sure of that. And that, that's, that's what worries me. You know, I'm trying not to, not to comment so much on this team and just, you know, be a presenter and let you be the analyst. This is the super egos of Nigeria. Isn't it a worry that whenever two or three major players are missing, the team is struggling? Isn't that a problem in itself? Yes, it, it is a problem. However, we have to give Tashira the benefit of the doubt. If he doesn't use friendlies to test players, how will mm. we know who is supposed to start when we get to the AFCON? 
And we can look at this in two ways. Oh, we didn't win. Oh, when we don't have certain players, we don't win. Or we could also look at it from the lens of this player didn't perform. So he has played himself out of the Afcon tournament. And that's the positive I'm trying to get here. There's certain mm-hmm. players on the back of this performance, they won't be starting on Monday. And they probably may not go to Afcon on the back of this. But we wouldn't have known that if we didn't give them an opportunity today. That we also wouldn't have known if those regulars were available, Shala. And that's why I have a problem, you know. So, um, <laughs> so Pizarro should know what he's doing. I like the fact that he's brought some good philosophy of optimism. Uh, he has thrown a lot of, you know, courage and hope in the air. And now people are beginning to believe that the Super Eagles can do it again. We must say the signs. Let's talk about the AFCON draw. It's now everywhere. Group A, it's Cote d'Ivoire, Nigeria. Guinea-Bissau and Equatorial Guinea. Uh, Shala, I'll, I'll let you give your views about that group before you leave. And before you start yakking away about Nigeria and Cote d'Ivoire getting out of that group, let me remind you that just in March this year in Abuja, the Super Eagles couldn't beat Guinea-Bissau. Yes, um, that was a very um, underwhelming result. Um, however, in the return fixture, uh, we did get our revenge. Um, in January, I don't expect us to collect anything less than seven points. So I expect us to win the two um, games against Equatorial Guinea and Guinea-Bissau. And um, that should qualify us anyway. Um, um, but Ivory Coast being the home nation, I don't expect us to beat them. Um, however, what I do find interesting is as we are in Group A, um, and I believe we will qualify, um, in the following round, we will either play Egypt, um, who we beat last AFCON, or we will be able to get our revenge against Ghana, um, who knocked us out from qualifying for the World Cup. So that's really what um, I'm interested in at this point. I am very sure we will qualify. Um, I believe so too, but you've just been talking about revenge, revenge, which only shows that the team has been dropping so very bad results. <laughs> in the past, so that's why there's so much revenge everywhere. Shala, I want to say thank you so much for your time. Uh, we'll try to see if we get you, if we can get you back on Tuesday to talk about that game uh, after it's been played against Mozambique. Thank you so much, Shala. Thank you very much for having me. Awesome, awesome. Let's go back to Lagos. Dotsu, I'm sure uh, you want to also also jump on it. I, I like this team. I'm patriotic, but I'm also realistic. That group we need to be cautious because, as I said, in March this year, we couldn't beat Guinea-Bissau in Abuja, actually, um, Dotun. Well, well, well uh, yeah, you said it's right. We were unable to get the better of Guinea-Bissau in Abuja just this year. But the truth of the matter is this is a major tournament, and, you know, when the Super Eagles actually take to the field of play, when it comes to major tournaments like this, they come with their hair game, especially during the uh, preliminary stage. We saw, we, if you can remember what we... Uh, what happened during the uh, last Nations Cup, we actually got the better of all our opponents in the uh, preliminary stage. And going into the next round, uh, we actually fumbled. Uh, and for me, it's even a misfeeling. Why I said it's a misfeeling is the fact that my, my wife is an Equatoria Guinean, and Nigeria will be playing against <laughs> Equatoria Guinea. So it's really going to be a misfeeling for us. But even the last Nations Cup, I remember very well watching Equatoria Guinea. Together with my wife at home, we are really sharing them hope to actually go to the next round and qualify for the same final of the tournament. But in, in real sense, I think Nigeria will qualify from this particular group and qualify for the next one. Because Nigeria, the spirit is always there when it comes to this African Nation, Nations Cup. All right. Um, I guess we'll leave it, we'll leave it at that. Uh, this is wishing the Super Eagles all the best. And hopefully we'll get a chance to improve in all the areas that we have noticed. I'm very sure uh, Joseph Pezzero is listening. Uh, of course, it will do um, the needful, as we say. All right, let's move on now and talk about the Nigeria. Uh, I get stuck when I say it's Nigeria Premier League, Nigeria Professional Football League. Uh, but the domestic league uh, is our next port of call. And... Uh, let me just uh, pop up and, and, and run through this. Uh, the matches that we play tomorrow, match day three, Bendel Insurance will take on uh, Player 2 uh, United. I mean, the, the jerseys are a bit similar. Uh, then you have Sunshine Stars will take on Heartland. Casino United will take on Lobby Stars. These are games that will be played 
on Saturday. All right. Um, on Sunday, you have Abia Warriors take on Carlo Pillars, Rivers United, who take on Quara United, uh, Rivers United coming off that win uh, over uh, Remo uh, and that beautiful goal that we saw that everyone is talking about. Rangers will take on Niger Tornadoes, Bielsa United will take on Remo Stars. These are the games, uh, match day three fixtures on Sunday. And of course, Sporting Lagos will take on Doma United, the Abai Elephants will take on Aqua United. For me, this is the game. This is the game to watch because of the pedigree of the two teams. You can expect to see a very good game. Then Shooting Stars will take on uh, Gombe uh, United. So these are the fixtures in the Nigeria Professional uh, Football League. Uh, Doctor, let me get your thoughts uh, quickly. I don't know which, uh, which of the games, matches, uh, stand out for you. Uh, I'll be particularly interested uh, to see whatever happens between Aimba and, um, of course, uh, Aqua United. Of course, that should be the start game of the weekend, talking about Aimba against Aqua United. And you know the two teams, they have pedigree. They have, a, they have a wonderful track record when it comes to Nigerian Professional Football League. A seven times winner and a two times winner. And if you actually bring these two teams together one-on-one -on -one, and you definitely see that, they have what it takes to take, mm -hmm. up, take mm -hmm. on each other. And for Iyimba, the start of the season, uh, they had the draw in their first game and going to the next game, they actually had the victory and coming into this particular one, you should expect that it's going to be another victory for them against Aqua United. But for Aqua United, uh, the, it has not been so easy for them during the start of the season. But match day three is too, uh, is too early, early for, for which starts concluding that this team will not be wonderful at the end of the day or win the league or what have you. But for a Yimba, what they've been able to but do we're so going to see far, signs. We are going, yes, uh, not only the start, you see signs of what will happen Especially at the end of the league. Especially in this game. Of course. We're going to see Of course, signs. I'm expecting a Yimba to take them to the cleaners. But you know what Aqua United can bring to the table because it can all also uh, uh, become, it, it, it gives them problem actually in that particular game. But my own team, that I like to see during the weekend the Sunshine Stars off against Atlanta. And, and, I, I, and, I, and I understand. <laughs> I understand why. Now, let me go to Austin. I don't know if Austin agrees that the Abai Elephants will take um, Aqua United <laughs> to the cleaner. <laughs> I don't know if he agrees with that. Uh, but, but, but let's talk about it. I, I don't know if you have any other standout fixture on match day three. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to see what Rivers United can do against Quara United. You see, Quara United uh, became my team two seasons ago with the level of consistency that they showed and went all the way. So on a good day, when Quara United wants to play football, they can actually get the results that they want. So if I'm not talking about Aimba and Aqua United, I'm talking about Rivers United and Quara United. And I say that because Rivers United also need to show quality uh, if you beat Remo Stars the way they did, you'd expect them to even get better against Quara United. And if Quara United wants to get me talking, then they should give me that upset that I always want. Uh, for Aimba and Aqua United, I don't know why. I don't know where they're taking Aqua United to work cleaners. No laundry service in 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 Aba. They will just play football, you know. And Aqua United, they love going to play football in Aba. Why I like this fixture is because both sides are winless this season after two games. So they will come out and give us good football. And that's what we want to see uh, in the Nigeria Premier Football League. So Aimba will be looking for their first win. Aqua United also looking for their first win. Aqua United lost their first game and drew the second one against Sporting Lagos. That game ended goalless. So let's see if uh, Fatai's, Coach Fatai's team can go to his former club since he knows the team so well and then, you know, get a result that will get us talking. I'd love to see uh, what Bendel Insurance can do against Play 2 United. That's a, that's a big fixture. I think last, se last season it got us talking. It should also get us talking again. Bendel Insurance got the better of shooting stars in their last game. Can they consolidate on that win? Katsina United also be hoping to bounce back after losing to Kano Pillars. It's match day three. It's the Nigeria Premier Football League. And definitely to get us talking, all of these matches will be on TV. People can stream it. It's good one for the league. We we'll just wait to see good action, Yemi. All right. Okay, our last spot of call on the show is um, talk about the Olympics, uh, the 2028 edition, uh, the one to be hosted uh, in the city of uh, Los Angeles. And, of course, the International Olympic Committee President, Thomas Bach, has been talking. Five new sports will be added uh, to uh, the Olympics that year. And he's been talking about how well-suited those sporting events are 
to the competition. Let's quickly listen to the IOC president. We'll come back to wrap things up on the show. These uh, proposals have been accepted as a package by the IOC executive uh, board, taking into consideration that uh, these uh, proposals and these boards are fully in line with the uh, sports culture of our host in 28, with the American sports culture. They will showcase uh, iconic American sports to the world while bringing at the same time international sports uh, to uh, the United States. The inclusion will, on the other hand, allow the Olympic movement to engage uh, with new athletes and fan communities in the U.S. and uh, globally. Uh, not only, but in particular, of course, also in India, but across uh, the world we see the growing uh, popularity of uh, cricket and in particular the T20 uh, format. Uh, now uh, the World Cup, uh, a huge uh, success uh, already. So uh, we are looking forward uh, to uh, welcome uh, the world's best uh, players in uh, cricket to perform uh, in the uh, uh, US. All right, um, I was joking with Dotun. Thomas Bach will need to explain to me why some of our traditional sporting events here in Nigeria cannot be allowed uh, into the Olympics. But that's just for laughs anyway. Uh, sports like cricket, uh, softball, uh, will get the opportunity to be part of the 2028 um, Olympics in Los Angeles. And of course, we'll we love the inclusion, and uh, the more the merrier, uh, like they say. And also, uh, it's going to be our party shop, but boy, your thoughts quickly uh, as we go. The Olympics always trying, the, the IOC, I beg your pardon, always trying to see how they can make the next edition better uh, than the previous one. They've not even done 2024. They're thinking of 2028. Right, that's what it is. I mean, um, you, you listen to the IOC president, it was... Loud and clear, he said it that it's part of the Olympic movement to engage more fans and you know let them see more sports. You know, and, and this inclusion is very very important because I know a lot of my friends that play cricket and follow cricket, they still don't understand because they believe that cricket is massive, not just in Asia, even in Europe, mm -hmm. in England, cricket is big in Australia, cricket is big. You know, so and they've got top stars, you know, legends here and there. So. This is a good one that cricket is in the mix. I'd love to see more about flag football to understand it and how it's going to, you know, uh, impact on the Olympic movement. There's also baseball and softball. It's so good. I like the fact that they are thinking ahead. Uh, 2028, they're already telling us the five sports that will feature and they're doing so much work. That's what it is in terms of preparation and ensuring that you're right on track to deliver a world-class tournament. And you said it well, Yemi. Yeah, mean, even though we try to laugh with it, it would be good to see Nigerian sports or sports with African origin. Dambe, for instance, is a fantastic traditional sport. You know, I've met people who talk about Dambe in an international way, and I'm saying, if we have done so much, if we have a federation that will, you know, blow up this exposure, maybe someday, even are you, can be a game that people can get to talk about because when I look at Ayo and I look at chess, I say, what's the difference? You know what I'm saying? So that's it. That's the show in London. I'm Austin Okonak, and in everything you do, remember, let's keep talking sports. Bye for now. All right, it's a wrap on the show, but I wouldn't go without... Um, I mean, saying a, big, a very big thank you to Dotu uh, for his Thanks time. Thanks well for having me. All right. Uh, that's the show today. Last one for the week. Enjoy your weekend. You'll see us again next week. I'm Amy Adebayo. Bye-bye.